Hey guys, welcome to the video. Uh, today I was just going to talk about mirror alignment. Um, just basically about the mistakes that I made in, in my um, alignment and then what I did to fix those mistakes. Um, starting at the beginning, I guess, uh, when I first bought the machine, I didn't really know anything at all about CO2 lasers. Um, so I've just been learning as I go. Um, the more that I sort of used the machine and the more I started to read on uh, some of the groups on Facebook and um, YouTube, things like that, um, I came to realize that basically what was happening was I was cutting my material at a higher power than what I guess people with a lower powered laser were doing. So this is an 80 watt laser and there was people out there with like a 50 watt laser that were cutting at, I don't know, let's just say 30% power, um, whereas I was using about 40 to 50% power to do my cuts. Um, so it was after a little bit of time that I realized that the alignment was probably out. So I did quickly jump on YouTube. I watched a couple of videos, uh, just how to do the alignment test. I'm basically, you know, putting the masking tape onto the mirror and firing that pulse, uh, to center the, the beam into the center of the mirrors. Um, so after doing that test, it came out that mine was actually out of line. So all the beams were hitting, all the pulses were hitting inside the mirrors. Uh, but they definitely weren't hitting right on top of each other. So um, without sort of doing too much research, which was obviously the biggest downfall and the biggest mistake that I made, I just jumped straight in and, and basically started to try to align these mirrors. Um, so starting at the back, uh, what I'd done was I put a piece of tape onto this mirror one, fired the pulse from the laser tube to the mirror, and it kind of hit uh, sort of to the left and down. It definitely wasn't in the center of this mirror. Uh, and as I said, without doing all the proper research that I should have done, um, I knew that these set screws were adjustments uh, to, I guess, align or move the mirror. And I had started adjusting these set screws thinking that if I were able to turn this mirror, that that would then align the beam coming out of the tube into the center of this mirror. Uh, it absolutely does not do that at all. Uh, this mirror is really there to align to mirror two, as you can see down through the middle there. Um, so that was my first mistake. First mistake was I adjusted this thinking that that was going to help put this beam in the middle and it does not do that. Um, so by making these adjustments and also what I will say is this top one um, does up and down. Uh, this one does left to right and I believe this one in the corner is for a diagonal. Um, came to realize that you really only need to adjust these two. So the up and down and the left and right, not so much the diagonal one. And I had started playing with all three of these, just sort of tinkering with them. And by doing that, I'd throw in this alignment um, that far out that it wasn't even hitting mirror two at all anymore. Um, basically, uh, I came around to mirror two here. Uh, when I would fire the pulse, it would come all the way back and it was hitting somewhere out here. It wasn't even hitting mirror two. So when mirror two was all the way at the front of the machine here, um, it wasn't even hitting, hitting on that mirror at all. So that's how far I'd thrown the alignment out of it. During that same process, um, I'd actually also started messing around with these set screws on the back of this because when the beam was originally coming off a of mirror two to mirror three or into the laser head here or mirror three, um, I thought that these set screws on the back of the laser head here um, helped align that beam to that mirror two. And again, it does not. These set screws actually align the beam going straight down to the bed or to the material. Um, so I had messed with the screws on mirror one. I'd also messed with these screws here on the back of the laser head. So therefore my alignment was hugely out. And it took me, I, I want to say three days, probably five hours a day. So maybe 15, 16 hours um, to get this thing back into alignment. Um, so first of all, it was pretty much my fault because the, the machine was cutting really good. Um, it was just, uh, you know, like I said, it, I felt like I was using a little bit more power than I needed to. And so when I did the alignment check, it was out, took it upon myself to just jump in and start tinkering around and, and mess the whole thing up. So um, basically what I did was I started from the beginning. And like I said, this literally took me hours, but... Uh, the, the best and quickest, easiest way that I found to do this was I started with the laser tube. And what I came to find out was that these screws on the bottom of this laser tube bracket, um, they're on the front and the back one. You can undo those. And by undoing those, I was able to move this laser tube about two millimeters towards the back of the machine. Uh, so I just literally un undid those screws and pulled the whole bracket and tube back a little bit, tightened those back up. Also here, 
If you undo these little ones here, they're also on the front and the back. There's a wheel down here. I don't know if you can see that there. But once you undo these screws on the front and the back of this tube, you can wind this wheel and that actually raises and lowers the tube. So I was able to bring the tube about two millimeters back towards the machine and also raise the tube up about a millimeter or so, which then put the beam firing directly into the center of mirror one. Um, then obviously, as I just said, trying to f find the pulse from mirror one to mirror two was firing nowhere near mirror two. So what I had to do in that instance was I took a piece of A4 paper and I placed it in here. So I tucked it up under here. Um, I had this gantry, obviously. Well, it didn't really matter where it was because it wasn't hitting it anyway. But I had a big piece of paper in here, so A4. Again, I'd powered down the um, the max power. So now if you're on here, you can see you can hit max power. And you can see there, mine is set to 80. But you can actually just dial that down. And I had that dialed down to about... Um, 10%. So, you know, it took a couple of hits on the pulse button to even make a mark on the paper, so there was no way it was going to catch on fire or anything like that. Um, so I sat a big piece of paper in here, fired the pulse, and I was able to locate uh, where that where that beam was actually hitting on the paper, and then very slowly was able to um, adjust mirror one um, to bring that beam back around to hit mirror two. And also what I will say is with these set screws, um, you, you only have to turn them minutely, like a millimeter at a time. Um, the smallest adjustment makes, makes such a big difference, like a huge difference on such a small turn. Um, I didn't know. I was just going for gold on these things and turning and, and, and yeah, like I said, it was an absolute nightmare. It was, I'd spent three days just trying to get it back into alignment. But um, once I was located that beam back here on mirror two, I was able to use mirror one, the set screws on mirror one to pull that beam around onto um mirror two here and then obviously became the problem of of having the beam hit in one spot on mirror two at the back and then also again on the uh, front over this side that took a bit of time and it was literally just a few um adjustments of these set screws at the back here which uh, again it, it did take me quite a while to get that dead on but I eventually did um then became the next problem of aligning it to the to the laser head because i had played with these screws at the back here uh this was all out of alignment down here what I ended up having to do, um, which was easier, was I ended up undoing these four screws here and I moved the whole laser head um, just in a little bit. And that really helped it to be able to fire dead into the center of that, no matter whereabouts that laser head was on the bed of the laser. Um, then became the problem of it firing down. And what was happening was, um, when it was firing down, it was making like a dash mark uh, or what they call a half moon, which means that the laser is actually hitting the inside of the cone piece here. Um, and that was obviously because I'd mucked around with these screws. So what I did was I backed all these screws out all the way, tightened them up just until they sort of started to bite where I could feel that there was a bit of pressure on them. Um, basically took off this cone piece down the bottom here, pulled off this part, took out the laser so it was just the tube, and I put a piece of masking tape underneath the tube, and I just sort of outlined it with a lead pencil so I could see it, and then hit the pulse button. And then I was able to see, obviously, when, um, you know, if this was, if this was it, the, 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 uh, the, the, the beam, I guess, was firing about here, and obviously I wanted to bring it dead into the middle, uh, it was firing over here, so what I had to do was I had to move, or tight, basically tighten up this screw, and as as that sort of pushed out, it sort of, I guess the top one sort of does this way. And then these bottom screws at the bottom here do the sort of front to back. Um, so it was just a matter of basically tinkering with these screws until I was able to pull that uh, alignment back into place. So once I'd gotten that done, I popped the cone piece back on, put the lens back in, tightened all that back up, and I did the same thing. I put a little piece of masking tape underneath this nozzle here. Again, just rubbed a bit of lead pencil around it so I could see that circle, fired the pulse, and just minutely adjusted these until that pulse was bang on in the middle of that circle. Uh, and then obviously the last thing, uh, just to make sure that it was correct, was I lowered the bed and I put a piece of uh, MDF down. Um, I haven't got anything at the moment, but I'll just use this as an example. 
Uh, I basically put a piece of MDF down, fired the pulse, and then I raised the bed up a few mil, fired the pulse again, raised it up a few mil, fired the pulse again, until eventually, um, you know, that was almost touching there. And just making sure that every time I fired that pulse, as I was bringing the bed higher, that it was firing in the exact same dot every time I fired it. Um, so yeah, that was basically how I got that back into alignment. And like I said, um, my own fault, obviously I didn't do the research before I started mucking around with this alignment on the machine. Now that it is aligned, it does perfectly land on top of each other, no matter where the laser head is. And on mirror two, it hits the same place every time. So it took hours and hours of, uh, of trying to do that to get it right. But eventually I did. But, um, as I said, if you're looking at doing a mirror alignment, I suggest highly doing um, the research, and definitely more research than I did because I had to learn the hard way. Uh, I had orders coming in and I just was so frustrated that I couldn't produce anything because this thing just wouldn't cut, it wouldn't do anything. And like I said, it was a three day period of, you know, five hours a day um, trying to get it back into alignment. So obviously, as I said at the start of the video, I'm, I'm new to CO2 lasers. Um, I'm learning as I go, as I'm sure that probably most of us are. Um, so I definitely don't 100% know what I'm doing here, but um, I just thought I'd throw up this video and it might maybe help someone else out um, in knowing that, you know, you can actually adjust uh, that laser tube, the, uh, the height of it, and raising it up and down and bringing it forwards and backwards to actually get that to fire into the center of this mirror. Um, and then also using these set screws on the back to make those alignments. And again, you know, being very careful when you do adjust them because the slightest the slightest turn makes such a big difference. And that's where I went wrong is that I didn't realize, you know, I was sort of turning like this and before I knew it, uh, everything was all out of whack. So um, yeah, it was a pretty, pretty big learning experience for me. Um, but you know, at the end of it, I basically know the machine front to back now because I've uh, spent so many hours on, on trying to do that. So, um, but it definitely helped me with putting the piece of paper in the front here to locate that beam. And, uh, and again, as I said, I did, um, adjust mirror two uh to try and line up with this one but it, it ended up being easier for me to just undo those four screws there and just move that laser head about a mil oh, i was probably about two millimeters in um and everything then sort of lined up beautifully so yeah anyway guys i'll leave it at that but uh thanks for checking out the video i hope you liked it and if you did give it a like and consider subscribing to uh the channel um you know i like doing these videos and i'll be throwing up more over the coming weeks so um yeah thanks again guys cheers